Let's take a look at how the actual space shuttle design contributed to the loss of uh, two of the orbiters. Now this configuration is of course well known, the piggyback configuration where the orbiter itself rides on top of the, of the fuel tank with two solid rocket boosters on either side. Now the reason the orbiter is piggybacked onto the fuel tank is because the engines are at the back of the orbiter. In order to get the fuel into the engines, you have to plummet through uh, the rear part of the shuttle and into the engines. Now the safest place to put a payload when you're launching a rocket is on top of all the stuff that blows up. But if you did that, you couldn't put the engines on the shuttle. The engines would have to be at the bottom of the fuel tank which means if you have an expendable fuel tank then you're expending the engines along with the fuel tank every launch and these are pretty expensive engines they took a lot of de developmental effort to get them to work so they wanted to reuse the engines they wanted to reuse the spacecraft they wanted to reuse the solid rocket boosters uh, uh, after refurbishment for every flight the only thing they were going to discard uh, in entirely for every flight is is the fuel tank now this configuration on the surface doesn't seem like there's a problem um, but actually there were a couple problems and uh, if you look back at the Challenger the Challenger had a situation where the solid rocket boosters were essentially under engineered for the task uh, within each solid rocket booster there are sections and these sections are filled with propellant and then they're put together and there are seals between each one of these sections. Now the seals are designed so that when the chamber of the solid rocket booster comes up to pressure then that pressure helps seat the seals between the sections and in order for these seals to seat properly they have to be flexible and pliable. Well in the case of the Challenger they launched about 15 degrees colder than any other shuttle launch and uh, the seal on the bottom right booster did not seal properly and you ended up with uh, erosion and exhaust gas blow by and then after a few seconds then that essentially uh, caused a rupture in the hydrogen tank and then you had an explosion emanating from the bottom of the hydrogen tank that pushed the booster out and away rotated the front of the tank or the front of the booster, top of the booster into the tank which punctured the oxygen and then you have a bunch of fire and oxygen and hydrogen all together in an explosion and that was it. Okay. Now had they launched at a higher temperature then this might not have happened. Uh, but there is a history of seal erosion in previous flights but NASA had accepted that and Morton Thiokol, the contractor for the SRBs, had accepted that um, as a flight risk that they're willing to deal with. Um, had they envisioned this happening, then obviously they wouldn't, they wouldn't have flown. After the accident, there were about 185 changes or so made to this entire shuttle uh, system, uh, including uh, a more robust design of the seal joints, what they call the field joints, in the SRBs. All right, so if the shuttle had been mounted on top of the tank, and this explosion had taken place, it's possible that the shuttle might have been able to survive this explosion. Uh, we don't know for sure, but certainly when it's sitting there in a piggyback configuration, it makes it less likely for it to survive. So let's move on now to the Columbia accident. Now, everybody knows that the, um, the um, fuel tank is covered with foam, and the reason it's covered with foam is, as I mentioned before, the fuel tank is, has liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen in it, which is very, very cold. And especially here in Florida, we have a lot of humidity, so if you recall the old Apollo missions, you had ice, you could see in the old films, ice falling off the side of the tank. Um, well, that's no big deal if you have your payload on top, but that can be a very big deal if you have um, your actual orbiter with your people and payload uh, in a piggyback formation. So anything that would fall off here could apparently or could theoretically impact the shuttle and cause a loss uh, of the orbit or cause damage. So the idea behind the foam is to keep the ice from building up and therefore no ice is going to break off and impact the shuttle. The thing about the foam is uh, even though the foam was designed to keep ice from forming and breaking off, you still have to keep the foam uh, attached to the tank. 
and when you combine the acoustic vibration of the SSMEs along with even worse acoustic vibration of the SRBs you have a lot of acoustic shock that has to be dampened now all that water you see, that steam that you see come up when they launch a space shuttle that is an attempt to dampen that acoustic vibration but unfortunately it's not enough throughout the shuttle program there were incidences of tiles falling off and foam pieces falling off here and there on multiple shuttle flights now on Columbia's flight what happened was there is a piece of foam which is mounted at the base of the bipod now the bipod is actually this little thing here which comes out attached to the nose of the shuttle and there's hardware bolting it to the inner tank on either side of the shuttle nose and that hardware goes right to where the tank is and in order to keep ice from uh, from forming on that they coated that with with some foam and uh, ironically it's that foam which was designed to keep ice from forming and that foam itself is what actually broke off um, and uh, a big foam brick essentially I think is about 14 inches long if I remember correctly came down and impacted the reinforced carbon carbon leading edge of the port wing punctured a hole in it and once that happened uh, they were never going to successfully be able to bring that orbiter back in through re-entering the Earth's atmosphere so again the architecture here with the piggyback orientation uh, contributed to the loss both of Challenger do the SRB separation and this whole thing going up and a piece of foam falling off and, and uh, knocking a hole in the leading edge of Columbia so NASA realized after losing two of these orbiters that there's no real way to make this um, totally safe um, I have a theory that uh, if they had uh, not tried to save weight by taking this paint off of the tank if they left a nice adhesive um, epoxy latex paint over the entire tank then perhaps that would have contributed to keeping the foam uh, vibration down and keeping it from detaching from the shuttle but we'll, we'll never know for sure so if you look at the SLS configuration uh, again we're back to the standard Apollo uh, setup where everything is on top of the tank and the SLS is going to use an extended uh, tank uh, just like the space shuttle but the SSMEs space shuttle main engines are going to go on the bottom and then you have two five section uh, boosters on either side so <clears throat> payload goes on top on top of everything that's going to blow up and uh, this even though this was a tremendous technological leap and advancement in space travel uh, this basic architecture uh, was flawed alright so this is one of the um SRBs and if you look at uh, photographs carefully you'll notice that the upper section of the SRB uh, including this cone here is kind of an off-white sort of cream color and that's pretty consistent in space shuttle shots so um so I mixed up a little something here and I'm gonna put it in my little airbrush color cup and uh, and spray these uh, these top sections If you look close you might be able to see the difference in this color and that color as your white so it's very subtle but it's definitely there okay one down Okay. Easy enough. So these SRBs have uh, lots of stripes on them. They have red stripes around the top and they have red stripes around the bottom right here. So um, 
and there are also some, at least in the case of Atlantis, some sort of yellowish cream colored uh, insulation that goes right here, which I've you know, already, you already seen me you know how I did that. So we're going to get ahead and uh, spray uh, the red stripes first, and then we'll get to the kind of yellowish cream stripes. <laughs> Let's talk fuel tanks. Um, as I may have said before, the monogram uh, tank comes with a textured surface, but when you assemble it, uh, the texture is lost when you do your same work. So the conventional solution here is to get a, a textured paint, and I had picked out uh, a textured paint. I'd gone down to Lowe's, and it was kind of a rough surface, or a little bit rough, and. Uh, so I was getting ready to use it and I had a friend over and he says, oh, that's going to be not nearly rough enough. You need to get a lot rougher than that. So we went up to uh, the local Hobby Lobby and we picked out this, okay? This is Krylon Stone Coarse Texture, all right? So I put this on. It looked a little rough to me. And he goes, oh, you can, you can just, you know, knock the edges off of it, sand it down a little bit, it'll be good. So I applied this and then I went to... Um, do some light sanding and it all came off in chunks. It didn't uh, adhere to the primer that I had underneath. So I spent like two hours with steel wool uh, stripping all the stuff off of my tank just to get back to square one. So then I went back to Lowe's and uh, I was going to get the stuff that I had before but then I found this. This is a Valspar sandstone and if you look at these two you can see that the sandstone is is a bit uh, smoother than than this so um, so I decided on to go with this so I did that and I sprayed it on uh, yesterday and the result of that is right here so here is the tank and uh, you can it's still it's a little bit rougher than I would like for it to be it's maybe a little bit out of scale but um, I'm not gonna risk taking stand paper do it again uh, this is good enough. Uh, most model details a little bit out of scale anyway, just to kind of accentuate features. So this is going to be good enough. So we're going to go ahead and paint this uh, fuel tank tonight uh, with the orange. I've got uh, certain hardware uh, sections already taped off with an underneath color. Um, so that's the plan. So here we go.